All right, guys, so let's try this again. I'm trying to use this new DJI thing and it's just getting a little, little getting used to. Uh, anyway, so if you are working on a Freightliner, Cascadia, now this is very sp specific to EPA 10. So I'm doing a follow-up video to the video I'm just about to post, which will be a part one. So you're gonna be looking for part two. Uh, and again, the code itself is gonna be SPN 2791 FMI 14, EGR valve actuator fail-safe mode. Okay, so what that means is the fail, the actuator, the VGR, EGR valve actuator. Okay, this is what controls your EGR valve. DD13s have these, they're typically gonna be mounted up along the block. DD15 will have this mounted up by the turbo. Either way, the job is the same. Okay, so when you get this particular fault code, it means that the EGR actuators stop working. Okay, kind of by default, something's going on with it and it goes bad. Um, what I look for, just like I said in the video, I look for uh, oil contamination. So if I find that, that has to be addressed, okay? Um, you can argue with me all day, but from my point of view, I've seen it enough where the oil will start to wreak havoc on other electrical components. Number one, it'll start to make its way over to the MCM. So when the MCM itself starts to get a signal or a resistance, I've seen them where they both don't play well together and they both shit the bed. So you have to replace them both in addition to addressing the oil contamination issues. Um, so with this particular one, we went ahead and replaced everything as you kind of saw me going through in the video. Injector harness, the front and back, MCM harness. Uh, I did replace the actuator and the MCM. Okay, so I went ahead and went to Freightliner, got one. Now this is kind of where the video itself is important. This little, this whole section that I'm going over with you guys. And what's important is that when you go and buy an MCM, especially certain years, you can only buy it in an RA, which is a remanufactured, okay? Not an EA. EA means new, RA means reman or reliable, whatever they want to call it. It's the same crap. Um, come with a one-year warranty. The problem with these, I'm going to... All right, guys, so still getting used to this recording thing. Problem I had with this over at Freightliner is they programmed it. Everything seemed to be go, going well, put it in the truck, uh, went ahead and started doing some testing. So as we always do, put it in there, start the truck. I didn't see any codes. I didn't see any issues. I take it around the block. This was at the end of the day. So I, well, number one, I noticed that the engine brakes were not responding. Number second was the cruise control not working. I thought that was a little funny, but again, end of the day, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I, I figured, okay, I'm going to troubleshoot this a little bit later the next day. Fast forward, following morning, hook up my computer. I want to see if there's any codes. And sure enough, the same EGR fault code pops up, right? The same one I'm showing you guys here. And I thought that's weird because everything associated with it um, has been taken care of. However, uh, I figure I'm going to diag a little more and do some more work. Now, if you do a quick little Google search, you'll see for yourself, it does share a common signal. One of the common signals it does share something with is the engine brake solenoids. I had an extra set. I put both of them brand new. Uh, it also shares a signal with the sensor on the All right, guys, so fuel filter. Again, engine brake solenoids. It does share a common signal, so I replaced them. The fuel filter module, when you open your ignition, and again, this is specific to the EPA 10, which is gonna be 2010, 11, 12, 13, and even some of the 14. Anyway, that's kind of what I would consider the first generation of DEF when it first got introduced. So. That little green light, when you open the ignition and you get that little green light, that's your uh, water in fuel indicator. I hope I'm saying that right. Anyway, so I replaced that with another one that I have. And by the way, if you are trying to replace that sensor, it is discontinued. You have to do the update from the three piece over to the two piece. Uh, anyway, did that, still had the same thing, the same problem. I went ahead and called a buddy who works at a rival dealership to Freightliner and he let me borrow one of their test MCMs, okay? So he gave me a test MCM, already programmed for DD13, put it in the truck, fired up. I have no more codes. I take it around the block. All right, guys, sorry. It, uh, it's working with my hand gesture. So uh, take it around the block. Engine brake works. Cruise control works. AC works. Everything is working just fine. Uh, I don't have any, any particular problems with it. Everything seems to be working just fine. So I thought that's fantastic. We have a bad MCM, defective MCM, right out of the box. So I take it to Freightliner. Freightliner says, not a problem. We'll get you another one. Uh, but we're going to have to charge you another $465 programming fee. Um, I didn't think that was fair. So the guys, I've got a good relationship with them at Freightliner Velocity here in Whittier. And they went ahead and waived the fee or they absorbed the fee, but they didn't charge me the fee for it. So I get another one. I waited maybe about a day or so. I uh, got another replacement MCM. By the time I get back to my shop and by the time I install it, um, fire up the truck. And if you've been here before, you kind of know the layout of, of the shop. I park the truck 
in the rear of the building, move it up to one of the front bays out here. And no sooner than I turn the ignition, the exact same fail-safe code came right back. So ah, here we go. So I've troubleshooted everything. I've replaced all the necessary po uh, components that were damaged or defective. Um, there we go. So I had to take this same one back to Freightliner and there's a bit of a problem that they have. Now, I don't know if it's a quality control issue with Detroit or Freightliner or who, but either way, there is a problem with these where these can be defective right out of the gate. Uh, they wanted me to bring the truck in so they can troubleshoot it. But again, it's something that I've already diagnosed myself and I'm familiar with the trucks pretty well that it's defective. So they said, well, we'll get you another one. And at this point, I mean, between installing the parts, getting the new MCM, going back, testing. We literally have gone from one week turnaround time, a little bit less than one week to two weeks. And we're almost jumping into three weeks. I mean, the customer's calling me, he needs his truck and I get it. I would feel the same way that, hey, where is my truck? What's going on? So anyway, long story short, replaced, I'm sorry, returned the MCM that was defective, ended up just buying the test MCM for my buddy and the truck hasn't had any problems since. So if you are encountering, you're gonna have two problems potentially. Number one, if you get the code itself, actuator and MCM. Again, they do not play nice with each other, okay? Since they don't play nice, I recommend replacing them both. If you have oil contamination, you have to address that, um, you know, simply putting some electric cleaner and clean that shit out. I don't think that's gonna fix the problem. And then the other problem you may encounter, and I had another customer, same thing happened to him, defective right out of the gate, MCM. So if you're buying an MCM, guys, be aware that potentially it is gonna be defective right at the gate. It may have either a programming issue or it just may be defective because it, it's garbage. It just doesn't work. So anyway, long story short, that's something you may encounter. And again, this is for SPN 2791 FMI 14 EGR failsafe. So guys, I hope this video kind of summarizes the first one. The first one just kind of shows you everything that we encountered and what we had to kind of, the obstacles we had to kind of overcome to get everything to where we are now. And then the second one, hey, again, they don't play well. If you have that problem, you may have to address where you're replacing both of them. If you have oil contamination, in my opinion, it's gotta be addressed. There's no other choice there. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Guys, if the video itself helps you out, that's kind of what I wanna do is share the information, um, share it with you guys, kind of spread the knowledge. Um, and if you have any questions, as always, hit me up. All I ask, like, subscribe, um, have yourself a great day, have yourself a great holiday. 